Good afternoon, everybody uneducated economist heirs. So I thought I'd talk a little bit more about credible threats. Now, when it comes to credible threats, this is the main policy tool coming out of the Federal Reserve. And very few people talk about it. They talk about how the Federal Reserve failed, how the Federal Reserve is going to be pivoting. They talk about how the Federal Reserve is missing the target. They talk about all this stuff that the Federal Reserve is doing, but they are not talking what the Federal Reserve strategy truly is. The Fed has stated it many times within their own speeches, what the Fed is going to do going into the future with monetary policy. Now, part of that monetary policy is an inflation rate of around 2%. Here's the problem with it is, is that everybody assumes that it is a 2% target. It is not. It is a 2% average inflation rate over time and nobody knows exactly how they figure out this 2% average inflation rate over time. Even they themselves admit that they do not have a formula for average inflation rate. So now when I think about what it is that people are saying the Federal Reserve is going to do going into the future as far as a pivot, they are not taking into consideration that the Federal Reserve has moved the goalpost on what it is that they assume this average inflation rate is. Now, I know this can get really complicated to understand, and a lot of this information can be esoteric in a way. But if you try to really focus in on what the Federal Reserve's true strategy is, then you can really try and, well, you won't even have to try. If you could really understand it, you can then internalize it. And then when you look at the economy out there, when you read these news articles out there, you can then incorporate what it is that you know about the Fed and what it is their strategy implies when it comes to these economic events that are happening out there because a lot of people are like thinking this is political a lot of people think that it's going to be environmental or social or something like that that has taken place that is not it for years now since 2018 i mean i'm sure even further back if you probably read more of their speeches but i have speeches that i am going to talk about i cannot not put out this information right when i read some of the articles that i am reading coming from very like I would, I mean, it's hard to respect any mainstream media, but what you would assume be respectable or respected news articles who are totally missing what it is that the Federal Reserve is truly trying to do, right? And that's where it's really important to understand. I am going to talk about this in a live stream later today, so if you're watching this video, you can, we're going to break it down, you can ask questions, we can really figure this thing out. But what's happening right now is that the Federal Reserve is trying to go for an average inflation rate over time. And now the main problem with their average inflation rate is that they don't really have a way of creating inflation. And as much as people really want to believe that it's all this money printing, a lot of times when I hear it's money printer go burr, what, do you, what else do you need to know? They are not taking into consideration that quantitative easing one, two, three, and four failed to produce the inflation scenario that the Federal Reserve is looking for. And that took the balance sheet back then. Like, we're not even talking the recent money printing. We're talking the money printing that had taken place back in the, you know, great financial crisis. Took the balance sheet from $850 billion to over $4.5 trillion and more than quadrupled the balance sheet. Way more money printing took place back then than has taken place this recently. Even though the dollar amount of money printing has been more recently, the percentage basis, it was much more back during the great financial crisis and it failed. Think about that. It failed. They knew their strategy wasn't going to work. This money printing strategy wasn't going to operate in the same fashion that it had, that they thought it was going to right? It gave the people this idea, all this money printing, that there is going to be inflation coming into the future because of it, right? That inflation expectation is what drives inflation. But when it failed to produce the inflation and people weren't worried about it anymore, then they were not concerned about the, the, the people themselves were not concerned about dealing with the economy as if the inflation was coming. That inflation expectation had lowered, was anchored too low, and it was messing with the Federal Reserve's monetary policy, right? And the reason why is because it took the interest rates too low to zero, right? Now, this is something very interesting to think about because when the Fed funds rate gets close to zero, their monetary policy becomes ineffective. They cannot stimulate the economy with the dropping of interest rates because they fall into what they refer to as the lower bound, which is zero, right? 
And if they can't stimulate the economy with the dropping of interest rates and getting people out there to go and borrow this money to buy houses and cars and go on vacation and do all the things that they really wanted to do with, with their money, well, with borrowed money, I guess, then they have to figure out a way that they can get this money into the economy and it came through stimulus. They said it before the pandemic. They said the next downturn would take fiscal stimulus. Uh, man, I wish I could go back and find some of the statements of that. I'll probably go and research some of that. I just thought of that. That's kind of just me going off there a little bit. But they were stating that, that they are not in a position in order to stimulate the economy with the lowering of interest rates. They can't do it. They said it back in 2018. Right? And so that it was going to take fiscal stimulus, fiscal you know, effort to try and, and revive the economy or at least bring in this borrowed money to then like how to, I guess the best way to do it or understand it is to fill the sluices, right? Because it doesn't really matter where this money goes so long as it gets out there. As, pe as long as people are taking that money and spending it, that's what they were most concerned about. And then if you can create the inflation scenario by just stimulating people with money, then it would have worked back in quantitative easing one, two, three, and four, but it failed back then, right? Because all this money essentially just went up into the banks and if it doesn't leave the bank, then it doesn't really stimulate the economy. You had to borrow that money into existence, right? I mean, it was borrowed into existence in, in a sense that it was, you know, issued out there, but it won as it ended up basically as reserves on the big banks balance sheets right and so these big banks unless they lent that money out to the system it wasn't out there chasing goods and services this time around it was actually injected right into the system the only problem is is that it would have just been a flash in the pan and it would have been over if it hadn't been for the severing of the supply chain and that's where i'm going to leave i i don't know if i have it with me i don't have it with me i'll see if i can get a copy of it but one of the more recent speeches coming from the Federal Reserve says that exact thing, saying that it was supply chain breakdowns that had really caused the major inflation scenario that we had experienced. Now, I know a lot of people would be, oh, of course, the Fed would say that. But this is what I have been saying since the breakdown even started. Like, this is the reason why lumber prices came back down to normal prices right they were all record highs people were making jokes about it there was memes about take me out to an expensive place and they were taking them to the lumber yard you know they were it it was insane people were calling it greed manipulation all this other stuff but i had massive amounts of videos talking exactly what was taking place within the lumber industry and i pretty much pretty much had it on a weekly basis that this that the lumber industry was breaking down this was all throughout 2018 and heavily through 2019 the inventory depletions i mean it was not like it wasn't imagined it wasn't greed it wasn't i mean it might have been greed for some people i mean some people might have got greedy at that spot so i'm not saying that there wasn't greed taking place because there obviously could be ta you know somebody going man if i can be in the money i'm going to get in the money right i mean that's not necessarily agree that's capitalism and I mean I'm all for it because right now they're not doing well if you look at lumber prices they're at five <clears throat> I don't know around 550 per thousand which is considering that they were at 1700 per thousand at one time right 550 per thousand is an incredibly low price and a price that we had experienced back in 2018 yeah 2018 into yeah 2018 right and now something else to consider about that, and I don't know why I'm going off on this, it's probably because I've had too much caffeine today. But when you consider the way that they actually figure out lumber prices today, it includes a rail rail shipment to Chicago. It used to be from a Pacific Northwest Central hub, I believe up in the in the Canadian area, up in the British Columbia area. There was a central hub that a handful of these mills would deliver lumber to, <clears throat> and the contracts were for that. Now they get delivered out to Chicago, right? and they're a quarter of the size. These contracts include that travel cost, right? So you think about it, if it was still done the old way, they would probably be even lower than they are now, right? The, the lumber prices is all I guess I'm getting at. And so understanding the Fed strategy again, like if you can understand the Fed strategy, then all this stuff makes so much more sense. Like people can't explain to me a lot of the things that I can explain through the Fed strategy, right? And I'm not trying to be somebody who's just like, no, we got to support the Fed. I'm not like that at all. I can care less whether or not you support the Fed or, or whatever. What I'm trying to do is figure out what it is that they're doing so I could be making the best decisions for myself. 
and as I discuss that here on this channel and I get everybody else's you know ideas and understandings of what it is that they are feeling and seeing out there within the economy this is how we figure it out if we listen to the mainstream media if we listen to people who have no way of understanding how it is that you live in your wants and your needs and your desires there's no way that there's ever going to be able to give you information that is going to benefit you you must acquire this information for yourself internalize it and then you can be able to make those best decisions all right wow why am i so fired up all right uneducated economist you guys let me know come back for the live stream tonight i'm going to talk deeply about this stuff all right